Well, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, this is actually uh, the last time I was giving it, Jude and I were in a session together about five years ago, six years ago, a while ago. And I gave a talk then about um, uh, the same uh, issue. I, I, the point I'm going to make here is uh, uh, I had just thought of that morning at 7.30 a.m. before the talk five years ago, so I didn't have a talk. And I, and I exp explained the issue in the talk, but I, it was the first time I explained it. And it wasn't very um, clear to Judah um, or to a lot of other people. So um, I'm going to try to revisit that conversation uh, here, but the point I was making. Um, I didn't do much about it, but then recently uh, Thomas and I have written um, actually much too long a paper about um, this. And this is uh, fairly philosophical. Um, and this is, um, uh, unlike Sanders' talk, I'm abstracting away from uh, the real problems of the world. And I'm more interested in the philosophical problems about what comes first, causation or manipulation, all right? So, um, okay, so, uh, so I'm going to have variables x, which is going to be uh, a treatment cigarette cessation, you know, like randomized to keep smoking or stop. Z is an intermediate blood pressure at one year, y is an outcome, say heart disease by two years. You observe data on all of these subjects, all are binary. Capital letters are random variables, small letters possible values. The results of the study, you get to see the joint distribution of uh, these variables, uh, both given x equal 1 and given x equal 0. Its marginal doesn't matter. So uh, this is, so there are eight probabilities, which means the model dimension is 6, because two different things have to add up to 1. OK, so that's the observed distribution. And we're going to start, I'm just going to assume a counterfactual causal model. So you can be randomized to x, and then uh, z parentheses x is that if x, you have two values of z, depending on whether you get x equals 0 or 1. And then y, the last va variable in the chain, you have four values, uh, possible counterfactual values of y, depending on whether uh, the value x gets set to and z gets set to. And those are the basic objects uh, which we assume to exist. So there's a total of seven, var seven kinds of variables. The factual variables that we actually saw, you just get from the counterfactuals by recursive substitution. So your z is z capital X, your y is you put in capital X and z capital X. OK, and we're going to assume no confounding. That is, we're going to believe, we're going to assume there are no common causes of x, y, and z on the graph. But what do we mean by that? Well, we'll see that the meaning of that English statement depends on the causal model. And to show how it does, we're going to consider the query, does a binary treatment X have a causal effect on response y through a causal pathway does not involve an intermediate z? That is, does x have a direct causal effect on y not through z? OK, what, so that statement is, again, an English statement. It's been formalized in several ways in the literature. One way is, is the control direct effect. The control direct effect is uh, x and y, uh, when z is set to z, is the average effect of x and y had all subjects had z equals z. So you see I'm taking, look at the right-hand one. Is there something? Oh. Look at the right one. I take your y, I fix your x to 1, I fix z to one of its two values, and I, but fix, let's say z equals 0, and I compare when I move your x but keep your z fixed, and I average over the population. That's the average effect. There are actually two of them when I set z to 0 and z to 1. Okay? Um, and uh, it's, so it's the effect of an intervention where I manipulate the variables on the graph, like this guy I get by setting x to 1 and setting z to z. That's the idea. It's a manipulation. Uh, and if on the graph, so because of time, the only graph I'd show you here is the three variable graph complete x, z, y. Have that graph, and you, re you can represent interventions by cutting arrows into variables on the graph. So this intervention, I cut the arrow from x to z. x doesn't have any arrow into it. Okay. Now there's another direct effect, and that's what this talks about. It's called the, I call it the pure direct effect. Uh, the pure direct effect of x and y is the average of the effect on, of x on y had the effect of x on z been blocked. So z remains as its value under x equals 0. So what do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to take, I'm going to take your y when I put x equal to 1, but I'm going to give you the value of z you would have had when you had x equals 0. 
And likewise, I'm going to give you 0 and give you the value of z you would have had when x equals 0. Now, it turns out this variable, which is interesting, is not the result. Uh, you can't, uh, this does not, is not equivalent to the effect you'd see by making any intervention or manipulation of the variables on the graph. Rather, it's represented, because it's not cutting an arrow into z, it's represented by blocking paths. Uh, <clears throat> this guy, this one, is unproblematic. This guy, this part of it, is the mean of y when I set x to 0. This is the problematic one. Why do I say that's not an intervention? Because uh, why is it not a manipulable parameter? So, which means I'm using that relative to the variables on the, on the graph means I can't manipulate them uh, to get that parameter. Um, well, how would we learn this? We'd have, to We'd have to intervene and set x to 0 to learn that in an experiment. Then I'd have to return each subject to their pre-intervention state, intervene to set x to 0, and put z to that, to that the state it had when you had to z 0. And finally, I'd observe the outcome of that. However, such an intervention strategy will usually not exist because, this, because such a re return to pre-intervention state is usually not possible in a real-world intervention. Suppose the outcome were death. I can't do that study. Okay? <laughs> so, uh, because we cannot, and the reason is we cannot observe the same subject under both x equal 1 and x equal 0. We can't see them across worlds. So no intervention will allow us to learn the distribution of mixed counterfactuals. Uh, <clears throat> so now let's, okay, those are, so here's the, so CDEZ, the direct effect, is an intervention parameter. Is it identified based on the causal graph in figure one, i.e., can this guy be written as a function of the observed factual probabilities? And the answer uh, by both uh, me and Sander Greenland and Judah is yes, and here's the identifying formula. Effective intervention, no problem. Is the PDE identified based on the causal graph in figure one? Sander and I said no, Judah said yes. And he gave the identifying formula. Notice this only depends on the distribution of the factuals that we actually see. It's described later. This is because we are assuming different causal models associated with the graph in figure one. Per, Jews using non-parametric structural equation models. We were, because it was a sort of epi paper, I wasn't being explicit, but I was using my finest fully randomized structural tree graph model from my 1986 paper, and I've been told I'm not good at acronyms. Anyway. Um, so what is the implication? Well, Judah realized he had identified a parameter doesn't represent any intervention, so he said causation is more fundamental than manipulation. As an N his NPSM model appears to violate the slogan, no causation without manipulation, since the pure direct effect is not a manipulable parameter relative to the graph, yet it's identified. He can learn a causal effect, okay? Indeed, he's recently advocated the alternative slogan, causation for manipulation, arguing for the ontological primacy of causation. Now, Pearl's view is an anathema to those with positive or Popperian, I wrote it wrong, philosophy like David, who argue that a theory that allows identification of non-manipulable parameters is not a scientific theory, because some of its prediction, that is the PD equals the above formula, cannot be refuted, since no interventional experimental average can refute the claim. So it's not part of science, according to many people. In contrast, for manipulable causal contrast, parameters are in principle subject to experimental tests. Every prediction made from observational data may be checked by an experiment involving interventions. That's because they're experimental. So, so um, people who believe this say there should be no causation without manipulation because you want to be able to check things. There's not part of science, and they read Judah out of science. However, uh, even those who say you can check things, they're the usual Popperian arguments, popper, you know, the usual arguments that get popper. Such experiments may be infeasible. Uh, they'll require an auxiliary assumption of another population like the observational population. You have to be able to measure all the variables on the graph, which you often can't, and they're based on the untestable assumption that the intervention you do in the experiment is really the one you do in the observational study. But philosophically, it's an interesting point nonetheless. Okay? So why did he, okay, so, but remember, he succeeded, I didn't. I'm now going to explain why. How many minutes do I have left? Okay, okay, why did he succeed and I didn't? Let me explain the difference between his model and my model. His model, we both have the same counterfactuals. His model says there are th the three sets, x, the two counterfactuals for z, and the four counterfactuals for y are jointly independent. Not within the, each set, but jointly. 
That means there are seven variables. So they're 2 to the seventh minus 1 is the dimension of the joint distribution of this, right? 1, 2, 3, and there are four variables here, right? I'm just hoping you count. His model, if you count up this, he's got one variable here, uh, three degrees of freedom here, because he has a joint distribution here of uh, the four, three parameters here. He's a joint distribution of z0 and z1. That's three parameters. And he's got 15 here. He has 19. So he's got a very small model. My model uh, from my AT6 paper only sets of variables in non-conflicting compatible worlds or assume mutually independent. So I say that x, zx equals 0 and y, x equals 1, z equal 1 are assumed independent because I could have a world where um, I did both of these. But I can't have a world where I have z, x equals 0, y, x equal 1, z equal 1. I don't assume they're independent because this is in one world and this x is in another. And I don't assume they're independent. Uh, Judah does. That's the difference. And that's, that's the fundamental difference. It's that because he allows independence across worlds, he can identify the PDE. I couldn't. Now, his model is a submodel of mine. That is, he makes more assumptions. Mine never identifies cross-world parameters. All manipulable parameters relative to G, that's the graph I just told you about the Greek, are identified. So any manipulable parameters are identified by the G formula, which we'll get to below, whenever the G formula is a well-defined unique function of the joint distribution of the factuals. That is, if I assume an FFRCISTG, I can get all, once I have all the Vs, no hidden variables, I can get all the effect, the intervention effects. Uh, um, I need positivity to guarantee this last part that it's well-defined. And in fact, I constructed the model specifically because I, in 86, took no causation without manipulation as a guide because I was an epidemiologist. I hated epidemiologists saying, oh, I'm a real scientist. I, they just counted things. So I didn't want them to get to be a real scientist. I said, you can only count things. If you can't do the experiment, the only thing are randomized trials. And I'm not going to let you know, don't say you have a theory deeper than that. Well, Judah's point of view is he wanted to do all causality, and he wanted to talk to physicists who have deep theories. So I purposely wouldn't allow any identification other than what you could do by doing an experiment. That was the whole goal. So, so that's saying it is. So Judas, it was, NPSM is what causality is about, based on certain philosophical principles, which I won't go into, but we were read about, you know, uh, you know, from this introduction to his book. My alternative view is that NPSM is a particular counterfactual model. Uh, there seems a great many more counterfactual independencies than the minimum needed to identify the effects of intervention on the variables in the graph, resulting in the pre predictions that can never, even in principle, be identified. Well, um, this alternative is not necessarily mine. I'm just taking the extreme alternative. That's, let's say Phil David. Can the conflicting claims about the ontological parameters of causation versus manipulation be re recounseled? David versus Pearl. Pearl told himself a story that implies, told himself, told a story that implies there is a way. He argued that the PDE and the associated quantity, the, the cross-world, darn it, the cross-world quantity are often causal contrasts of substantive and public health importance by offering a story. He wanted to convince us this was a good parameter. What was his story? He said something like, suppose a new process completely removed the nicotine from tobacco in two years, nicotine-free free cigarettes will be available. The substantive goal net is to use the already collected data today on smoking, hypertension, why, from a randomized smoking cessation trial to estimate the incidence of MI, MI in smokers were all smokers to uh, change to nicotine-free cigarettes. Suppose it is somehow known, this somehow is, that's why we're doing philosophy here, that the entire effect of nicotine on MI is through its effect on hypertension, while the non-nicotine toxins in cigarettes have no effect on hypertension. So. So under the further assumption that there are no other confounders on the causal DAG, the MI incidents, think of it, in smokers of cigarettes free of nicotine, what are they? It's if you had a nicotine cigarette, your hypertension status would be at the value you had when x equals 0. And your, um, the rest of your smoking would be at the value, everything else in smoking, the part that directly affects y, would be as it is. Cause that, Okay, so this, so he pointed out this parameter 
is actually of public health importance. It's what's going to be the result when we start smoking those non-nicotine cigarettes. Okay? He then assumed a um, NPSM model and concludes that it's identified from the old data and he already knows what the answer is going to be in two years. While my FFRC GST model doesn't identify this guy and I don't know what the answer is. What is interesting about his example is that to argue for the substantive importance of a non lethal parameter relative to G, he told a story about a manipulation. That was weird. A manipulation makes no reference to Z at all. Rather than manipulation it's to intervene to eliminate the nicotine content of cigarettes, which we just have cigarettes in our data. We don't have anything about nicotine. He made up a whole story about it. The most direct representation of this story is provided by another DAG. If I can get to it. Oops. I have to go to By this stag, where I have, here's the cigarette. It's divided. This is a deterministic arrow for this study. If you have x equal 1, you have nicotine 1. You have x equal 0, you have uh, other parts of the cigarette equal 1. Uh, the nicotine causes this. The other part causes that. That's his story. And I want to know, I want to cut the arrows here. This is the intervention. He wants an intervention. I'm at 0. He wants an intervention here and set n equal to 0 and o equals to 1. Well, that's a manipulation. So let's just do it. Let's ask about, a, he's talking about, a, let's just do this manipulation. And when we do it, we find out that even though we don't have variables, and so I'll just assume this guy's an FFRC ISTG. I'll find out that the causal effect is identified and by his previous formula by just using, never talking, not allowing an NPSM ever, ever, just doing manipulation on this graph. Um, okay, but now my time's up, but you have to get, everybody else got time for a slide, so oh, but I can't get out of here. What do I do? Okay. Okay, so I'm going to, okay, so I, I don't have enough time, so let me just say what I'm, what are the implications of the example? For Judah, having at the onset assumed NPSM associated with DAG-G, his story did not contribute to identification. Rather, it only served to show that the non-manipulable parameter, he was, of the NPSM associated with the DAG, could encode a substantively important parameter. The manipulable causal effect of setting N to 0 and O to 1. For someone only willing to entertain the FRSRG model for G and thus unable to identify cross-world effects, the information necessary to identify the effect of nicotine cigarettes was actually contained in the story. As the parameter, uh, this guy is not identified without the story. But with the story, I get a new graph. And there, that parameter is then the effect of n equals 0 and o equal 1 is identified. And you can show from marginalization from that graph is exactly this parameter. So from a Popperian point of view also, it is the story that makes Pearl's claim refutable. Because when nicotine cigarettes become available, we can test his claim by intervention that forces a random sample of the population to smoke. So by very telling me that story, he went back to a manipulous interpretation. And in many, many, but not all examples, that can be done. And, uh, so I don't have enough time to go into everything. So in summary, it's often useful to maintain the ontological primacy of no causation without manipulation, expressing where possible identifiable non claimable parameters under an NPSM associated with the graph G is identified manipulable parameters under an FFRC ISTG based on a DAG G prime with a node set V prime, a superset of V. And to find such an identifying cause of DAG is generally necessary to make the variables deterministic functions of variables in V. So there's nothing, no new mathematics here. It's, this is all about philosophy. All the mathematics I did by going to this other thing, you can see it's contained the same mathematics. It's just you can reinterpret many of these things as uh, manipulable parameters in a bigger graph, and therefore they become preparingly testable because you had to tell the story by which I could then later test them, take the nicotine out of cigarettes. Thus, again, all points of view are equivalent on these big fights. There shouldn't be such big fights. You just have to have a broader mind. Everybody should get along. Thank you.